I'm going to give my bit on multi-processing. And to break that down, uh, especially for the Mac versus PC debate, you've heard the term SMP thrown, al uh, thrown around a lot, meaning symmetric multi-processing. Uh, so I'm going to hit on that as well as talk about uh, other types of processing uh, like um, asymmetric, asymmetric uh, processing, uh, massive, massively parallel processing, so on and so forth. Uh, but first, let's, let's start off with uh, SMP. Now, I'm not going to try to bore uh, um, anyone in getting uh, very technical, so this is going to be a really crude and, and uh, hopefully simplistic explanation that uh, everyone can understand. And before I uh, do start off on uh, SMP, I want to make it clear that the operating system uh, is not the only variable in, in getting any, in any type of multiprocessing. It is just one part of it. You need to have capable hardware and a capable application. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Okay, so symmetric multiprocessing. Um, Basically, it's multiple multiple processors or multiple or multiple cores on a on a single processor uh, chip, if you will, and they are all connected to a a cache uh, like L2 cache or um, a uh, the, uh, a common uh, address space memory address space. Uh, they're sharing that that the address the memory address space pool. Now. That said, uh, you have technologies like um, Intel's hyper-threading and stuff like that that uh, they talk about um, where they try to improve, on the at least on the hardware side of things, to make uh, SMP uh, much more efficient. While the hardware could be efficient, the software may not be so much, um, and especially the applications. So. All right, so let me uh, put up some diagrams here uh, of some examples of like multiple CPUs, uh, that's, that's very common and let's just say for the Mac Pros um, you have, you have uh, multiple CPUs there then you also have multiple CPUs with multiple cores on those CPUs um, so imagine though the main issue is, is the syncing of, uh, of the chips and the, and the chips communicating with, the, with each other and why multi, multi-core um, basically in every empirical uh, evidence that I've seen uh, will usually outperform multiple CPUs. Uh, simply, uh, you could, once one variable being that it, there's less uh, traveling space uh, within the uh, cycles or the chips actually talking with each other, so on and so forth. Um, uh, you also have, depending on, on the paths that, if it's a multiple processor, what are they taking? Um, what, what is the pipe with, uh, basically, uh, how, how, how much is available to that the processor and how fast it's able to, to get over to the other CPU, uh, so on and so forth. And um, I don't really want to get too technical here, but just for very crude purposes, uh, take that definition of it. But anyway, in these diagrams, you can see that there's uh, multiple processors um, connected and, and then those processors could have uh, multiple cores on them or you just can simply have a system that has one physical CPU with multiple cores on it. Now that said, SMP may not always be beneficial. Uh, quite frankly, like I said, you have to have, a, a lot of variables have to be in place for it to be optimum and even in use. Um, some obstacles let's talk about, like you hear in the Mac versus PC debate, is many Windows versions do not support uh, symmetric multiprocessing. Um, quite frankly, they can the, the operating system will run on a multi-core chip, but it simply won't see it as as multiple cores. Uh, or even if there was, let's say, two physical CPUs uh, within within the system, it would just only see one of them and, and, and recognize only really one of them. Um, other obstacles would be you have an application that is is not capable of multi-threading over over multiple uh, CPUs, uh, and therefore is not is basically going to stick to, to to one CPU. Now, where would the benefit of SMP come into that? Well, in the context of multitasking, 
which is not can don't equate it to multiprocessing. Multitasking, an example would be you have your email application up, uh, your your browser up, uh, a word uh, word processing uh, application up. Uh, basic, basically, these tasks, these tasks that uh, are in memory, that uh, can be, for a crude word, toggled on CPU cycles, or you have multiple CP, uh, CPUs uh, using their own cycles addressing these multiple tasks, if you will. Um, the threads actually being the link between the application to the OS to, to the CPU to, that, that, that instructions are being funneled to and fro. So I'll just put up a crude example um, just to simplify, showing an application here with a thread to the OS to the CPU instructions going back and forth there. So in this case we have that application that is only seeing one core or one CPU or, or a non-multi-threaded uh, application. It itself can then act along with other with the other tasks being uh, balanced more efficiently, let's just say, um, with an SMP system on how uh, the cycles are used to address all the tasks uh, being uh, requested to, uh, and sent down to the uh, CPU. So you could you could be running uh, all these applications and the, and how the cycles are managed and address space used uh, to get all of the instructions coming down from the applications and back up to them in a very efficient manner. And really that's what the arguments are going to come down to uh, is the efficiency of, of the operating system and how it handles symmetric multiprocessing or even multiprocessing for that matter. And really in talking about efficiency uh, I'm always one to always bring up asymmetric uh, multi or multiprocessing. Basically we have dedicated chips for specific tasks. Um, what better way where you have um, applications specifically written and this, this doesn't really so much exist uh, in, in the retail market or, or for most of the viewers um, watching this video but having dedicated processes uh, and, and there are works actually happening on this where there's uh, going to be multi-core chips in, in a core specific for one function and another core for another function so on and so forth um, so even asymmetric uh, multiprocessing shouldn't shouldn't be ignored I wanted to bring that up and um, basically a diagram to show a contrast between asymmetric multiprocessing and symmetric multiprocessing. You can see that they're, uh, can, they, will have, they don't necessarily reside on the same cache or, or the memory bus. They can have a dedicated memory set to that one chip, uh, even a specific function. They don't have to be identical chips, identical clock, uh, clocking and all that sort of stuff.